All right, guys, welcome back to the tutorial today. Today, this is going to be a footstep, uh, dynamic footstep sound um, for when you're walking or, for example, if you were to jump. There's sounds. Um, and yeah, so this is what the tutorial will look like today. Um, at the end of the tutorial, you'll have this. So yeah, follow along and let's get right into it. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another game dev tutorial. Today, we're going to be adding um, dynamic footstep sounds for whatever uh, ground you're stepping on, whatever material you're stepping on. So for example, if it's a wood floor or if it's a concrete floor, like you've seen in the previous clip, you will have different footsteps. Um, and yeah, so let's set that up right now. So the first thing I want to say is I'm going to be including the sounds that I'm using um, personally in the description. However, um, there are sounds that I'm sure you can get from like freesounds.org. I think that's where I got these. Um, I had them in a folder in one of my projects, but you can find these almost anywhere online. Um, and if you don't want to find them like that, I'm sure you can find them in the marketplace. So I'll go over them now. I have, um, I have a bunch of wood sounds. And so I also have a bunch of concrete sounds. So the more you have kind of the better in terms of, um, making it realistic, because obviously if you step on it, um, like if you were to step on a real wood floor, it wouldn't be the exact same sound every single time. So what you want to do is once you grab all of these, um, I think I'm going to include this file, but if I do not, you just want to drag them all in, um, all of these files. So you just want to do that, drag them all in. You want to get a random node, connect them all to a random. Um, and this will make it so it all plays randomly. So as soon as you press play Q, it'll play a random one every single time. And then we want to get a modulator right afterward. And you can copy these settings if you would like. The pitch min is 0.95. The pitch max is 1.05. The volume min is 0.95. And I made the volume max 1.5. Afterward, you just want to connect this straight to the output. And that's basically your whole foot, um, footsteps cue. The same thing applies for the concrete. Um, you get every single one of those, you connect it to a random, then you go to a modulator where I just changed the volume max to 1.5. Um, so it sounds a little bit different every time and then connect it to the output. Great. Um, also I changed the volume multiplier in the output to 0.45. You can change this if you feel like the footsteps are too low. That's entirely up to you. Um, all right. So now let's get into the actual tutorial. So the first thing we want to do is go into our, um, Actually, let's go into our project settings because we need to set up a couple things with the physical materials. So let's go to all settings and let's look up um, physical um, surfaces. So here we go. So let's make our first physical surface wood in this case um, and our second one, maybe like concrete. You can obviously change these to whatever you would like, but I'm going to use these two for this tutorial. So now we can close this. We have wood and concrete as our physical materials. So let's go on to um, the Quixel bridge. That's what I'm gonna use for my wood and concrete surfaces. You can use whatever you would like. Maybe you have some packages already installed on your, um, or imported into your project, but I'm gonna use Quixel bridge to get um, the two surfaces that I'm gonna use. In the meantime, I will make a quick plane for you guys to show um, what I'm doing and how I'm basically going about it. So let's just do this. Let's make a quick plane. Um, I might have to log in. Hold on. And let's just move it up a little bit to not have clipping. And then what we can do is uh, move it like so and then duplicate, move over. Great, so we have two different materials. Um, once we put them, once we put them on it. Now let me log in, and I will be right back. Great, so I'm logged into Crucial Bridge. Now what we want to do is go to Surfaces, and we can look up anything we want. For example, I'm going to look up um, wood, and get some type of wood flooring. I like this one, so what I'll do is I'll just get um, the highest quality just for this case. And I shouldn't have to log in again. Great. Highest quality, I'm gonna download it. And while that's downloading, we're gonna look for, um, well actually, let me just wait for this to download so I can import it and then I'll be right back. Great, so now that it's downloaded, we're going to add it to our project. Um, you should only press it once and you can see that the material will be added right here. Um, we're gonna go back to our Quixel bridge and we're gonna now look for concrete. And I think there is a section um, on here for 
concrete there is. Um, let's go to rough concrete and let's add this one. So what I'll do is I'll go to highest quality again. I'll download it and then I'll be back when it's done downloading. Great. So now that it's done downloading, I'm going to add it to my project as well. So now we have two different materials for the materials that we want to use. Um, what we can do very quickly is just drag these materials onto these different planes that we created. All right, so now that we have both of these, let's go into our content, go to our um, first person and our effects, and let's make a new folder called physics materials. So let's do phys mats. Inside of this folder, we want to right click and we want to go to physics. And then from physics, we want to go to physical material. Once we have this, we want to click on physical material and press select. So we can call it um, PM underscore wood, and then we can save and then duplicate this and call it PM underscore concrete. Great, so now we have two different um, physical materials, wood and concrete. Let's open up wood. And on the bottom, you can see surface type. We want to make sure we assign it to wood. We can then save and close it. Um, we can also close Quixel Bridge and your footsteps if you still had that open, your both of your footsteps cues. Then we want to open up our physical material for concrete and make that concrete as well. And then you can save and close this. Now let's quickly go to our materials that we are using for these um, different planes. So we want to go into the details panel and set the physics material to the one that we just created. So let's go to the wooden one and I'm going to use that for my wooden material. So I can click on this button right here. It'll take what I'm highlighting in the editor, um, in the window, um, in the folder panel right here in the content browser, and it will make it go immediately to this slot that I'm highlighting. Um, we're going to do the same thing for the damaged concrete. We can go right here, go to the um, physical material in our effects, go to concrete, and then make sure that is our physics material on our concrete material as well. So great, so now we can close these and we can get into actually how to set this up. So the first step in obtaining what we want is to go into our first person folder, right click, create a new folder, and let's call this notifies or anim notify. And in this anim notify, we're going to open it up. We're going to right click. We're going to click on blueprint class and we're going to type in notify. We want to click on anim notify and press select. Let's call it BP underscore footstep underscore notify. Oops. And basically what this is going to do once we open it up, this is going to be a place where we can um, dynamically make it so it can register what surface we're stepping on. And then it can also make it so it plays every time during the animation. So what we want to do is we want to go into our functions and we want to create a new function as well as override one. So let's override and let's override the received notify. So we have this function right here that we're going to be editing in a minute, but then let's also go to um, click a new function and let's call this get surface. Great. So inside of this function, we basically want to just get the surface that we're standing on and then um, assign it to a local variable that we can then push to our receive notify. And yeah, it'll just update automatically. So let's get right into it so I can explain it a little bit better. So the first thing we want to do is go off of this and go to a line trace by channel and we're going to make the start location the get actor location or I'm sorry the get player character and we're going to go off of get player character to get value we're going to get actor location and then we're going to go straight to the start after this we're going to go to the end and also go off of go off of uh, get actor location, we're going to subtract and we're going to let's make it context. Yeah, we're going to subtract a vector. We're going to subtract 150 from the Z value in order to get what's on our feet. We're going to go that to the end. And um, this will be dynamic on how tall your player is. This is I chose that because of the fact that the capsule component in mine is 150 in size. Um, Great. So after this, we want to go off of the out hit and do what we usually do. We want to break hit result, open this up, and we want to go off of this result value and do an if statement. Make sure that if statement is like this. 
great. So now off of this out hit as well, we also want to get the surface type. What this is going to do is it's going to make it so we can um, differentiate between each surface type. The way that we do this is by using a switch on physical surface. So basically how this works is if it's a default surface, we can um, assign it to one value. We can assign it to another value if it's wood or we can assign it to a different value if it's concrete. And this will make it so it always updates dynamically. So let's go off of this um, and we're going to do a couple of different actions. So what we want to do first is go to our local variables on the left, add a local variable. And the reason why we're making a local variable is because we're only going to be using it inside of this blueprint class, um, specifically inside of this um, get surface function. So let's make a new variable and let's make it of type float and let's call it um, surface param num or surface type num. Great. So we have um, a surface type num. And what we're going to do is we're going to set it upon each of these different physical um, surfaces that we're stepping on. So let's do like so and like so. Great. So now all of these are set. So we can set them to have different numbers. Then we can reference that number later on. So for example, I can set the first one to have one, two for wood and three for concrete. So after this, we want to basically play sound at location. So we'll play sound at location and we're going to do this three different times. And the location will actually be the location of the break hit result. So what we can do is we can make a reroute node and off of this, go to this location, this location, and then this location. Perfect. Let's move it up a little bit. Oh, I can't make it straight. It's okay. So then we'll go and connect these like so, and we just want to play the corresponding um, sound cues. So for this sound cue, we're going to play um, the wood sound cue, which is right here. And then we're going to do the same thing for this one, except it's going to be the concrete sound cue. And you can set this one to be whatever you want. For my sake, I'm not going to put one here just so that we can see the differentiation between the footsteps and the concrete steps. But you can always put one here if you would like to. Now, what you want to do is you want to go to this, make sure you have an output, a return node, and make sure that it's of type right here, make sure it's of type float and make sure that it is for the surface because this is basically the surface that you're going to be returning. So do it like so. And it's basically just going to return this value right here. So you can just do it like so and just connect it like this. Make sure all of these connect to the return node just in case if they click on or if they step on footsteps or if they step on wood, you want it to all return and all give the surface type number that it is. After this, we can compile and save and then start working on the receive notify to actually deal with the logic. So the receive notify is actually pretty modular, um, the system that I made for it, and you can work basically with it however you want, um, making it fully customizable. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna go off of a mesh component and we wanna check is valid and not this is valid. You want the is valid with the question mark on the bottom. So this is valid is going to check and see if it's valid first before doing a notify. Um, we're also gonna go off the mesh component and get owner. There we go. We get the actor components owner. And then we're going to go from is valid. And we're going to get surface. Once we have get surface, we want to see if it's not valid, we want to go to return node, and you want to add the return node, and you want to make sure that this is checked for a um, true Boolean. Continuing on, we want to make sure we go from the surfaced um, variable right here and we want to basically set the surface type number again. So let's go to our local variables. Let's create another um, type like this. We want to call it surface type num. Go to right here. You want to set that number and let's set it to the surface uh, value that we get from our previous get surface function. We can move this over. And then we want to basically create a sequence that checks and see all of our um, materials that we're stepping on. So if we go right here, we can go to move this over a little bit. Sorry, go to our then zero and we can check one branch. So we can use um, 
B being click and you can create a branch. And then you can basically check and see if the surface type is um, whatever value you expressed right here. So for example, if it's two, it should be playing my wood sound effect. Um, so let's go over and let's go to if it equals um, and we want it to be a number. So if it equals and let's make it the top one. If it equals a certain number, then we want it to play the wood sound effect. If it equals a different number, we want it to play a different sound effect. So let's go over, make this go straight to true, and this will be checked true. And then we want to go from then zero. So let's duplicate this, go down here, like so. And if it's true, it will also go right there. So do the same thing like so, make this go to the top and we can set this value now dependent on what value we set in the get surface. So since I set get surface two to be the uh, footsteps of wood, we'll say if it's two, then we want to essentially have wood be played. And if this is concrete, then we want this to be three. We can compile and save. And also I realized that this isn't needed in this particular um, blueprint, I accidentally added that. So we want to make sure we go into our um, actual animations for our character and make it so every single time we walk, the anim, um, the BP underscore footstep notify will be played. So let's go to our first person. Let's go to our extras character. Uh, yeah, so the animations are in here. So let's go to mannequins animations and then it would depend on which um, animation blueprint you're using, whether it's Quinn, Manny, or your own, you want to go into their animations and change them. So for my case, let's see which one I'm using. I think this is, this is Quinn. So we'll go to Quinn's animations right here. So we'll use the walk forward. And essentially every single time you can see there is right, left, right, left, right there. We want to add a new um, so we'll insert a notify track. We'll keep it like two. It's, um, not very important. What we do want to do is right click, press add notify, and basically do the BP underscore footstep notify. We're going to do that for every single one right in the middle. So right here, we'll add another one, BP underscore footstep notify right here, BP underscore footstep notify. And then lastly, at the end, BP underscore footstep notify. And so not every single time the character steps, there will be one. Great, so if we save, and if we go to our jump now, we should have a jump sound effect. So I think that's in Mania. I think they use the jump um, sound effect there. So for land, we want to also have a notify be played. So as soon as they land, about right here, about right here, we want to add a notify and just BP underscore footstep notify. And obviously you can change it up so it plays a different sound effect once you land. Um, does his foot go down more? Oh, no, 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 okay. Great, so right there, that should be the landing sound effect. So now if we go in, if I didn't forget anything, it should make it so when you walk on it, you can hear the footstep sounds of what it would sound like on wood. And then this is the footstep sounds of what it would sound like on concrete. And if you jump, there's a sound effect and it transitions dynamically based on where you're walking. And you can always make it so it sounds like maybe a harder fall. Maybe we can add that in a new tutorial if you guys would like that for jumping. But yeah, this is the tutorial I hope you guys did enjoy. Whenever you run it, also make sure uh, it works and it's dynamic with that. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Let me know what else you guys would like to see. Bye, have a good day.